Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 24 career mode and today we're here for the fourth round of our first MotoGP season for the Spanish Grand Prix at Jerez. Now if you didn't see the last episode at the US Grand Prix or the America's GP I suppose it's actually called, I do recommend you go check that one out before we do get into this one because it was... A strange weekend for us, a crash in both races, but we still managed to come out with two podiums. Of course, a second place in the sprint and a victory in the main race, which is really, really surprising and was a bit of a shame, really, because the AI clearly just were not up to it at Austin for whatever reason. They were actually pretty good in qualifying, decent in practice, but when it came to the race, they just, they just, they just didn't have it. They just were not there for some reason. So going into this episode, I am going to keep using the adaptive AI. I'm going to try it one more time, basically, just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke or anything like that. I am actually going to try and maybe do practice twice. So I might do the session, restart the session and do it again to see if it can get a better idea of my pace off of that because... Maybe it's just not, there's not enough sessions maybe in the MotoGP class to actually learn properly. I don't know exactly, but that is the plan for this episode. If it still doesn't really work too well and they are too slow, then I'm going to go back to the old slider method and I will just do practice before the races to find out roughly how strong the AI should be. I liked the idea of the adaptive AI because it meant I didn't have to do that and hopefully they should be able to respond to me over a race weekend, but it has been a little bit hit and miss so far this season. But anyway, onto the actual racing. Of course, like I said, we have got the Spanish Grand Prix at Jerez. A pretty decent circuit for me in the past. And you can see, of course, our main objective is to beat Raul Fernandez in the race. You can see, actually, we have got a fully dry weekend, except practice apparently could be wet for a little part of it. So I guess we'll have to see. So without any further ado, let's head into the Spanish Grand Prix and hope the AI can try to bounce back from their poor weekend in Austin. So here we are then for qualifying. And as you can see, this time we haven't managed to top practice, which is pretty good. I actually did free practice one and then the practice session just to give the AI a better chance to try and learn my pace on the first session and improve. And it, it kind of worked because I was top of the first session and then they were significantly faster in the other session. So I think it actually did make a difference. So hopefully they carry it through to qualifying. Weird thing I have seen here though is that AI performances seem to be a bit messed up because you can see Fabio Quartararo and Zarco both got through on the combined times into qualifying two and Martin and Marquez didn't. You can see fortunately they have actually gone through but even still does seem a little bit strange. Here we are then coming into the garage. And this one is going to be interesting. The soft tyres are the recommended tyre. And obviously, as I discovered in the last episode and in, in playing some online, the soft tyre is actually a very good tyre. But the soft front actually does suffer with quite bad overheating here on the trail braking. So I'm not too sure whether for the actual race, it's going to be... I'm going to be able to use a hard front. What I mean to say is... In the, in the race, I may have to use a hard front rather than a soft front. Is what I was actually trying to say there, because I messed up my words. I'll try and sprint a soft, and we'll see how we get on with that. But, uh, yeah, it, it does overheat a lot on the trail braking, so it could kind of invite a crash, which we don't really need any more of, because, well, I don't think there's been a single GP yet where we haven't had a crash. I guess the Portimao, I guess Portimao was a clean weekend, but, uh, obviously the other two, we definitely had crashes. I did actually see a comment saying that it's a bit, uh, the game looks a bit too easy from flight and the track out of Prillia for the win, and I do agree to an extent. But you have to remember that in this game, it's an Aprilia. So, I mean, I know in real life it is as well, but it's not like a year old Aprilia or anything. It's as good as the factory Aprilia, effectively, as far as the game's concerned. So, it is, it is a race winning bike, really. So, it's not quite as bad as it looks. But here we are then, starting our first qualified lap here in Q2. Just try and keep it nice and clean on this opening lap. You can see the tyre, the rear tyre is still not really up to temperature. And, oh, we almost had a crash, though, into the Michelin corner. But this is the least fuel I've ran all weekend, so it should be the, the fastest lap. Maybe that was a mistake as well. Perhaps I should have uh, lowered the tank in practice a little bit. Well, this has been a very scrappy lap, to say the least. So up towards the line. What's it going to be? 137.6. So, yeah, nothing good at all, really. We've been in the 36s in both the practices so far. So, a good amount of time to find. You can see, yeah, 1.6 seconds off of Digi Antonio currently. So, it seems like the VR46 guy is a bit like in real life. I've made a bit of a step coming here to Jerez. Okay, this lap has been significantly better up towards the line. It's going to be a 36.6. Yep, so that's actually pleasant. That's still ninth place. That is crazy. Okay, well, whatever I've done has worked. The AI definitely have turned up here because 35.8, that is quicker than I've gone all weekend. So I'd say pole position is out of the question, but to be honest, that's a good thing. You shouldn't really be on pole position. Like, I don't want to be starting at the front every single race. It'd be more interesting if we get mired in the pack. A bit more realistic, probably, as well, on this bike. This one has been even better up towards the line. So it's going to be 35.9. I think that's my first 35 of the weekend. And that puts us onto the front row provisionally. 
I think we're going to not have enough fuel to do another lap, so we're going to have to go back to the pits after that one. But to be honest, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think I'm going to chip much more off that. And you can see the AI, they are on some red sectors, so looks like they've got a bit more time in the bag. Well, there you go then. That's the Martin qualifying record that you're looking for. Almost half a second clear of the entire field there. Four tenths ahead of Digi Antonio in second position. So, yeah, it really seems like a bit of a resurgence of the GP23 Ducati at this circuit. Because you can see Digi second, Mark Marquez is fourth, Bezecchi is fifth, Bastianini's all the way down in sixth place. But it is a pretty close pack. I mean, look at the difference between myself in third place and Brad Binder in seventh. 38 one thousandths of a second separating us. So not even half a tenth between those positions on the grid. So it does look like the AI are up for a fight here today. So I really hope they take this pace through to the race. I know in the past they haven't, but I really hope they, they do. Hopefully it's more like Qatar where they're actually quicker in the race than they were in qualifying. But yeah, pretty happy with that one. We keep up our front row streak. I don't know how long we keep it up for this season, but so far... It does seem like we are actually a bit of a qualifying hound, which is a bit strange because in the past it's just not been an area that I've been too strong. But without any further ado then, we may as well get down to the grid for the sprint race and see if we could try and get some points here on Bastianini. We're starting ahead of him, so it's an ideal time to try and take the lead of the championship. So here we are then down on the grid for the sprint. And as you can see, it is pretty cloudy. So tyre temperatures will be, again, probably a bit of a factor like they were in the last round. I think the soft soft should be okay though on this occasion because I was worried whether the soft would be able to work in the race for the sprint. I was kind of thinking it's going to be okay anyway, but definitely now that I've just noticed here, my teammate is last place on the grid. Fantastic. Well, I mean, it's fantastic for me, but I don't understand why he's so far down. I have a feeling it's to do with the fact that when you join a team, for some reason, the game puts a team performance at the bottom of the index and the AI is affected by that much more than the player. It basically means nothing to the player, I don't think, really. You just have the bike, obviously, without the upgrades or whatever, whereas I think the AI are scaled based on it. So, Ralph Fernandez at the back of the grid. But what I was saying is that I think the soft should work here. I think I would have got away with it in the sprint anyway, but I think now that it's cloudy, it's, it's a done deal. So, we're definitely going to go on the soft tyres. Actually, you might struggle to get a bit of temperature in the opening couple of laps, so... It will be interesting to see how we get on. But without any further ado, we may as well get this started. Again, of course, starting from the front row. Not a massive run into turn one, so hopefully we won't lose too many places because our starts have just not been good this season. Jorge Martin heads from pole position. All of the other riders on the grid breathing down his neck. In a few seconds, the lights will go out and the race will begin. So Martin then on pole position. Digi Antonio alongside him. We're here on third position so it's an all independent front row but waiting for the lights to go here then for the Spanish sprint lights out and away we go and to be honest not a good start we've already been jumped by a entire row of riders down towards turn one Had a little bit of contact with Bezeki there on the run into turn one that's effective oh Banyar comes steaming up the inside so does Zarco and we've just completely hit into Banyar because of that Banyar is right to the back of the field because Zarco just completely cut it into us you can see yeah it's under investigation obviously that was John Zarco being super super aggressive I've also got one for a uh, collision with Bezeki and Morbidelli because I was obviously contact with Bez down towards turn one. Bezeki sort of came over on us as that row jumped us. But there you go then. Morbidelli gets a warning for that, apparently. And Zarko also gets a warning, rightly so, because Zarko steamed in there. I mean, I don't know how Zarko's up here, to be fair. He obviously qualified into Q2. I've just realized I'm in power mode 1 for some reason. So that would explain the poor start. So apologies for that one, guys. But there you go. We, uh, we have now rectified it. I think I'd forgot to change it in uh, one of the races. You guys uh, pointed out in the comments. So that would have been... Is one we were poor, but I, I turned it down. Actually, we may have had that in qualifying then as well. I'm not too sure. So I turned it down to save fuel on the way back to pits and won the runs. Either way, doesn't matter too much. We are fifth place here, halfway around the first lap. Zarco, the aggressive Frenchman, right behind us. Obviously, like I was saying, he qualified through straight to qualifying two. That's allowed him to be further up the grid than you'd expect. Instead of being at the Honda Cup at the back, and he's taken advantage, sent it into turn one, and sent Banyaya right to the back of the field. That's definitely something that I think I'll have to have a look at on the replay. There we are, the end, the end of lap one. It does seem like they're actually pulling on me, you know. I don't think I've got the pace of these guys, at least in the opening couple of laps. I think it has taken me a couple of laps to get into it in a few of the races so far, so I'm not worrying too much, but it does seem like Martin especially has sort of gone already. I think Digi Antonio maybe is holding up Marquez and Bastianini a little bit. I do seem to be closing on them a little bit again now, maybe, but Martin definitely stretching away now, which is nice to see because he's not been that strong so far this season. Been a bit strange. I mean, Banyaya was obviously pretty aggressive at the start there, pretty ruthless, but to getting caught up in an incident that was not his fault at all. And you can see already Zarka sort of doing bits for us, holding up the rest of the pack. We're almost two seconds ahead of him already. And we're only hot. Yeah, look at that. Look how far they're behind. Zarko 
is going to be a proper good rear gunner for this front group here, this group of Ducatis and myself on the Aprilia. So then Morbidelli's actually got past Sarko now and Binder as well, so there might be some pursuers coming now. But to be honest, again, Morbidelli even is probably a bit out of position, so he'll probably help us out. I think all the threats are pretty much neutralised, because Banyai was probably the only guy that would run at the front with us. And obviously always been sent back. Whoa, did you Antonio goes off the track? We got off the track. How was that not a track limits warning? I'm sorry? Okay, neither of us got a track limits warning for that. So that corner seems to be bugged. Actually, guys, let me know in the comments if you're having issues with the track limits as well, because I feel like the track limits are not that strict. I'm almost certain I've set them to strict, and if I haven't, I'm, I'm, I'll check after the race to make sure, but so far, it seems like the AI have sometimes been getting away with things they shouldn't be, and I've been getting away with things that I shouldn't be. It seems very, very strange. Maybe I'll over the line then. 36.7, so actually a pretty decent lap, considering it's a race pace. See Martin really checking out 36.3. But Digi Antonio definitely holding these guys in front back now. It's just allowing me to keep up, to be honest. I'm kind of stretching. Okay, so I had a much better lap on this occasion. We are pretty much all over the back of Enea Bastianini now, so we are sort of well and truly part of this group again, although I've run a bit wisely the last quarter trying to square it off, but obviously those guys are on Ducati, so they'll probably get out the corner better than me. But even still, we're going to be much closer to Martin's time for the previous lap. 36-2 for Martin, 36-2 for me, so fastest up of the race actually for me there, and Bastianini's had enough of being sat behind Mark Mark as he goes for a pass. It's actually cost them both a bit of time because he ran a bit wide as he touched the kerb. But Bastianini again sort of bashes Marcos through the Michelin corner. We're going to try and take advantage of the inside of Mark. Mark's got the position. Can we try and get the switch back on Mark Marquez? Yes, we can. Down towards. Oh, he's leading on us through turn four. Watch out through this corner. There we go. We've got past him. So over to P4 then. Now Bastianini up next. So Bastianini obviously sort of kind of allowed us to make that pass by being so aggressive with Marquez. Banyaya getting a track limits warning. Zarco getting a track limits warning. Wow, fair play to Banyaya actually. Back up to seventh place. Tell you what, he probably had the pace of this race because he got sent right to the back of the pack at the first corner. I saw him, he was so deep in the pack. So he, to get through that quickly already, he must have some incredible pace. So I think maybe the game had sort of decided he was going to be the top AI, and or one of the top AIs at least, because Martin clearly just doing what Bastianini did at Qatar now, where he got to the front and just checked out. He's miles ahead. I mean, we have managed to match him on lap time on the last lap, but that gap I think is already too big for us to bridge back. And Digi Antonio is really struggling through this stadium. Last couple of laps, he's been a bit wide through the first part, through Pelikey. We've got about half a second back to Mark Marquez, so we haven't got to defend, which is good. We could focus on Bastianini, but to be honest, probably just want to employ the same tactic. Just try and follow Bastianini as he tries to make a pass on Digi Antonio, because I imagine he will be very shortly trying to make that pass. So here we are then in the stream of Bastianini, 36-2 again to Martin, 36-2 again to me. And we almost hit Digi Antonio through turn one. We've run pretty wide, so we allow Marquez through, not quite. But Bastianini makes the pass on Digi then now. So Bastianini up into P2. Digi down to P3. And to be honest, I think we're going to probably demote from the sprint podium pretty shortly. Again, try to get the switch back through this section. This has been the sector where I've been quicker all weekend. Because I was going red through this sector in qualifying. And here we go. We're going to put ourselves in a bit of a compromising position. Trying to go around the outside through turn 5. Cito Pond's corner. We're going to run out of road. Yeah, fair play. Digi holds it in there. But are we going to get around the outside of it on the exit? No, not quite on the kerb. Have to pull out of it for now, but can we make the pass down towards the Pedrosa corner? Because again, another section where I've had a bit on the AI so far this weekend. No, not on this occasion. He holds he holds firm and keeps that third place. But again, we're going to have a look now into turn seven. What the inside of the chance. Anyway, we block him. He's going to try and attack us into eight. But I think on this occasion, I've got it. Although I turned it a bit too early to pick the bike up a little bit. That has a lot of digi back through. We're costing each other so much time. I mean, look, I'm a nine tenths off. My previous lap time, I've lost like a second. You can see how much Bastianini's pulled away on this lap. But fair play to Digi. He's given it everything for what would be his first podium of the season, of course. And we have got to pull his finger out because there's not much time left this race. Well, lap five, that's sort of penultimate lap of the race. So we do need to try and pass Digi Antonio. We've got a really good run down towards the last corner. Are we going to make a pass into Jorge Lorenzo corner at the inside? Digi, we go. Bit of contact on the entry. We're both pretty wide. This has been a very aggressive race for everybody. But that's the thing with this game, this is always going to be contact when you go for it on the brakes because, the, well, the hitbox is not right for a start, and the AI doesn't love to turn in when you're doing it. But there you go then, up into P3 then, can we try and attack Bastianini? We've got two laps really, we need to try and roll back up to the back of him, which is going to be difficult because he's been pretty fast, and then see if we can try and make a pass on him. Martin, of course, already gone, but I kind of conceded that a while ago, he's the 36-1 on the previous lap, so he's still motoring along. 3.4 seconds ahead, miles ahead considering it's only a sprint. Tell you what, let's look on the map, see where, let's look where Banyaya was, let's look how far that little group is behind her. Nowhere near, so we're not going to worry about him, but there's some massive gaps in this race. It's been a bit jumbled, I think, because 
of the practice results. But down towards the Danny Pedrosa corner, then we're going to have to send it on the inside of Anea Bastianini. Can we get it stopped? We've ran pretty wide. Bastianini surely going to come back on the inside. Yes, he is. He's got the switch back. I thought about it into turn seven, but we weren't really in a position to do it like we were to Bastianini. Obviously, we struggled on the last one. Another shot that was worn in there for Zarka. So Zarka had a pretty scrappy race, but I suppose he's trying to hold on to everything he can on that Honda. Just really isn't there at the moment, unfortunately. The Japanese giant. I mean, same with Yamaha, really. It is very strange to see, obviously, in real life and in the game, just how poor those bikes now are. Used to be used to be on one of those bikes and you were guaranteed a podium, pretty much. So there we are, then. We've got one lap to go. DJ Antonio is actually looking back at us a bit again now, but at the last call, we've got a pretty good run compared to Bastianini in the slip stream towards the line. And we're going to make a pass down towards turn one. Here we go. We're going to try and force Bastianini to the outside. He's going to try and hang it around the outside. We both ran pretty wide through turn one. Pick up the power earlier than Bastianini. Down towards the Michelin corner. He's going to try to hang it around the outside. Not going to go to plan for him. He just completely outbreaks himself there. And here we are then, up into P2. So if we can keep it to the end now. Another sprint podium. Well, we were going to get a sprint podium even if we didn't pass him. But another second place would be pretty good. But Martins absolutely disappeared. Another 36 form for him on the previous lap. It's, his pace has just been phenomenal this weekend. So here we are then out of the last corner. Coming up towards the line. It's going to be another second place in the sprint. And some more points back on Anea Bastianini. So there we go then. Jorge Martin dominates the sprint. To be fair, our pace was very good. Very, very good because I'm pretty sure that's quicker than I went in practice. Not too far off what I did in qualifying, about two tenths off. So I'll take that because that was, I think that might have been the last lap of the race, you know. If not, it was very close to that time on the last lap of the race because I was under for most of it. We actually kind of matched him because he was about four seconds starting the last lap. So actually a pretty good pace for us. And I think maybe if we hadn't got caught up scrapping, we would have been able to give him a bit more of a challenge. But he just was so fast immediately off the start, there's nothing that we could do. But to be honest, I was surprised to see Mark Marquez actually only finishing fifth place because he was all over the back of Digi early on, obviously running in third, but just wasn't able to ever pass his fellow GP23 stable mate. But there we go then, that is the sprint. Pretty good for us there, gaining some more points on an air Bastianini. We'll now head into the main race and see if we can try and repeat it. Maybe try and challenge Martin for the win, but honestly, he just looks way too fast for anyone to get anywhere near him this weekend. So here we are then down on the grid for the main race. And some of you guys that, that like to do the maths and look at the points for the championship will actually have probably noticed that in that race, we're now level with Anea Bastianini in the championship. So we're now joint championship leader going into this main race. So hopefully if we can try and beat Bastianini, we should be able to actually solidify our lead and actually be ahead of him properly. I think technically on countback, I am ahead now anyway, but you know, you just want to be ahead on the points just in case. Of course, Objectives, got to beat Ralph Fernandez, not going to be a problem. Got to get in the top 15. Again, I think not going to be a problem unless we have some sort of collision. Cloudy conditions, once again, soft tyres actually work pretty well in that race. You can see they are quite worn. So I think if we go for the soft, we're not going to have much left. But the game's recommended the medium, which the medium actually just is worse than the soft. Overheats more. So yeah, it's going to probably just end up wearing out more at the end of the day anyway. So I think the, the soft is going to be the one to go for once again for us. It seems like in this game, the soft tyre is actually really good, which initially when I started playing the game, I thought was going to be really bad because the medium was quite bad. But it just turns out the medium's quite bad. The, the soft's actually quite good. So yeah, it's uh, de if you guys didn't know that, definitely give the soft a go next time you're doing a race or a qualifying session or something. And you'll notice that actually overheats less than the, the medium tyre. But without any further ado, we may as well get the actual Grand Prix started. Hopefully, we could try and have the pace that we had in the sprint. Don't think we've really got anything for Martin. If he gets away again at the first corner, I think that's pretty much game over for the rest of us, to be honest. The Martinator proved himself as the pole man. We just have to see if he'll be able to dominate this race as well. Well, based on his sprint race performance, I imagine he will be able to dominate the race, Gavin. But we're going to give it everything we've got to stop that from happening. So here we are then. The lights are on. Wait for the guy here for the Spanish Grand Prix. Hold it for quite a while. As per, lights out and away we go. Oh, that was a terrible launch from me off the line. Once again, jumped by the same riders down towards turn one. Though this time, Bezeki seems to have rolled out of it a little bit early. Bastianini has got ahead of us. Banyai has a dive. Whoa, okay. I was about to say Banyai has it dive bombed. Who was that? Was that Banyai and Morbidelli in the background? That's dive bombed into turn one. But this time, we got a much better run out of the first corner. Actually got the switch back on... I think it was uh, Bastianini there. I just saw on the, the right-hand side, Pedro Costa was involved in some sort of incident. So it might have been a Costa, actually, rather than Morbidelli through turn one. I just saw a bit of red along with Bagnaia. But I tell you what, we're really on it here. We're all over the back 
of Digi Antonio. We're trying to go around the outside of Digi Antonio. We're going to run our road very similar to what happened in the uh, the sprint race, if you remember. So we tried to go around the outside of him there. But I'll tell you what, the tires are just much more to life immediately. I really struggled in the opening lap last time. But this time, the bike's actually feeling a little bit better as we go to the Danny Pedrosa corner. Is Digi Antonio going to tip in on us? He is a little bit, but he's left us enough space. We're on the inside. Digi's going to try and beat us down towards turn seven, though. We need to get past Digi as soon as possible because Martin is just going to escape away again. And here we go up the inside of Digi Antonio into turn A. Oh, he hangs around the outside through the Aspar corner. Are we going to get the switch back on the inside of the power as early as we can? Side by side, so close to Digi Antonio. As we go through the Anhel, the into corner contact. Down goes Digi. Down goes Digi. We're definitely going to be given some sort of penalty for that surely because we tipped it on completely. It's completely put me off there as well. Mark Marquez somehow being involved in that investigation. Not sure how that has happened, but contact with Digi Antonio early in this race then. And that's perhaps going to result in some sort of warning or some sort of penalty or something like that. I'm not too sure if it really was my fault. But yes, I've been given a long lap penalty. So we've got to take the penalty immediately. And we've done an Aldeguer. We've done an Aldeguer. We've gone through off the track. There was a KTM on the outside of the corner there. But this has been, wow, not a good start. A regular overtake, drop position. Okay, we'll let Aleish through. Is that counting as our position? I think so. So here we go then. What a strange start to the race. That's our first legitimate long lap penalty, I would say. I think in every other long lap penalty we have had, we've actually picked it up by uh, going into the pit lane incorrectly, which necessarily is not my fault because the the way the game works is incorrect with the white line. But even still then, we did a, we did a Fermin Aldeguer there, messed up the long lap penalty. Fortunately, we didn't crash like Fermin did, but yeah, not the not the best way. Obviously, I saw it pop up. Well, I saw the, uh, the indicator pop up first, telling us the distance, actually, before we got given the long lap penalty. But there you go then. We're pretty much in the same position as Digi Antonio now. So we kind of, we've got a fair punishment because we've still got to do our long lap. So that'll probably put us at the back. And this is not Austin. So we are not coming back from this. This is uh, going to be a hard slog of a race now. We're going to have to be, obviously, again, pretty aggressive. I, I can't believe I missed just that so badly. I'm really sorry to Digi. I, I feel really bad. And I apologize, guys, because there's been too much contact in a lot of these races. And it's not good enough. Uh, Augusto Fernandez had a crash a little bit behind. So we'll make sure not to overtake. Alex, just to make sure we don't pick up another irregular overtake. Although I think that was just because we overtook off the track. Ralph Fernandez, after this, is actually still behind us. But you know, I was saying he wasn't a threat at all. Digi Antonio's now out of the race, so he wasn't before. So he must have just had another crash there with Augusto. So Digi's now out, which I kind of feel a little bit responsible for, but not entirely. So this time, right, we're going to take it nice and slow into the long lap penalty to make sure we actually take it properly. Try not to uh, go off into the gravel and lose more time and also have to do it again. There we go. Rejoin the track. So there we go then. We're in 17th place now behind our teammate. So this actually has made the challenge a little bit more interesting that we have to beat him. I'm at 40.9 there. What a terrible lap time. But yeah, it looks like Martin definitely going to run away with this one now. We were pretty much the only person that was going to be able to go with him, judging off the race pace. But obviously, I've pretty much made sure that's not going to happen now. So we've got to make sure everything we do from now is clean, especially on our teammate. But we're already two laps in to a 13 lap race, so we've lost a decent amount of time there as we got the inside of our teammate Ralph Fernandez. It's like he's standing still. And to be honest, we're just going to blast past Luca Marini as well. I mean, look at this. It reminds me of Austin, really. The, the Hondas were so so at the back of the pack last time, and we've just passed them so easily. I mean, Marini there just blew past him. There's no difficulty whatsoever. Just notice the gap of nine seconds. I'm already 10 seconds almost behind Jorge Martin after two laps, which is crazy. I mean, obviously, that's what we get with having the collision. I obviously picked the bike up and sort of was in a bit of shock after that collision. Then we obviously messed up the long lap, had to take the long lap again. Slow lap behind slow riders, so lots of stuff going on there. But another comeback ride. We're really turning this season into a bit of a comeback season, aren't we? So then we're back on the back of Aleix Spagro. You can look at that. I've just seen the lap time for Martin. 37.8. What's happening? Why are they, like, now two and a half seconds a lap slower? Oh, you're joking me. Is this what the adaptive AI is going to do? Because I've had a long lap penalty and it's sent to the back. They're actually going to go this slow. Right, okay. Well, this may be very this may very well be the last episode now with the adaptive AI then, if that's how it's going to work. But we're trying to attack Aleix Spagro here. We've got to focus on the race ahead of us. We can only really do, we can only really fight in the race that we're in. And Aleix is trying to go around. What is going on there? I think Bezeki's just gone through the gravel. We've overtaken Aleix. We've tried to overtake Acosta, but we have to roll out the throttle because of Bezeki. Acosta's now hitting into Bezeki. It's getting pretty interesting. And look at, I mean, look, it's not even getting all the power out of here. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Okay. Right, so it does seem like the AI's times are going to be absolutely horrendous, which just doesn't make any sense. 
So this could very well be a case of like Austin, we're just going to have miles of time over the AI, but we are nine seconds behind, Martin, so I'm still fairly certain I'm not going to win, even if they are a bit slow. But we'll see, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to give it everything I've got, because obviously we're down in 11th at the moment, and our championship rival, Bastianini, is actually in second position right now, so he's getting a good 15 points on us, which is uh, going to undo a lot of our hard work. Mark Marquez, it's another track limits warning. He's already had at least one. I've seen that pop up already once, so we'll see if he actually ends up getting a long lap. We're behind his brother now, Alex, down towards the Danny Pedrosa corner. Up the inside of Alex we go. Are we actually going to pull it down? No, we are not. We are going to completely miss the corner, but he doesn't even try and fight us there, so unlike in the sprint, no one cuts back up the inside. And there we go up into 10th place, and the two Yamahas ahead of us crash ahead. Yellow flag, not sure who's down. Maybe it's a crash pot. I've just looked at the map. I've just looked at the map. Look how far Martin is ahead of everybody else. This is the train for second place here. I can see Bastianini. I can see Banyaya. It's just Martin that's ahead of everybody else. Nobody else. I've just picked up a trial that's warning. So not an ideal way to be. I did wonder how sort of Quattararo and Rins were doing so well. But it just seems like the rest of AI just goes so slow. They're just sticking with them. And here we go. We're going to just pass Quattararo like he's standing still. That's not what you do to a world champion that's as talented as Fabio. But... There you go, just the... Uh, I guess that's what happens when you get sent to the back, they just decide to ride really slowly. This, I'm sure this didn't happen in Moto3. I had to properly come back whenever I had to come from the back in Moto3. There we go, then fast up of the race, 36-5, hopefully. There will be a response to that by the AI, but tell me what, Alex Rins actually played that very well through Turn 1. He defended really well, so I got the run on him. But he just sort of stuck to his guns and, hang, and hung in there. Right, can we get the switch back on him? Yes, we can. I mean, we were doing this in the sprint to people. We definitely could do it here when they're going so much slower. It's a shame. It's a shame that, the, that they do this. I mean, I guess it makes sense because the adaptive AI kind of rubber banded a little bit. But this is... I didn't realise this is what was going to happen. So, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. But anyway, enough about that. We're going to get out of the Cito Pons corner. Blast past Vinales like he's standing still. We're going to probably pass Binder as well down towards Daddy Pedrosa. We're out of control. We are way out of control. Just about keeping it out of the gravel. So we try and check to rejoin the track. We're going to rejoin just behind Fabio Quattararo. I was going to say ahead, but just have to let him have that corner there. So, I'm doing some of my half work once again. Another mistake in this one. We're now 8.8 .8 behind Martin. Tell you what, we're going to try and pass Fabio here. Remember what happened with the other Fabio into this corner, though? We've got to be careful. Don't tip in on them. We're just going to have to slip behind Quattararo for now. So there we are then, down towards Jorge Lorenzo corner, we're going to go around the outside of Fabio Quattararo. No, he's not having any of it, to be fair, very deep on the brakes of Fabio, just rams his teammate out the way for us though. And oh, yes, yes, ah, we've taken advantage, passed the pair of them, under investigation as well. Yeah, not surprised, Quattararo just completely rammed Rins and just cost them both a position there, because we just were easily able to cut underneath the, the, the pair of them. And that now puts us up into eighth place. So there's a bit of a gap now between Morbidelli and the riders ahead, and I think, to be honest, that was partially because of me. Yeah, Quattararo... Warning for that incident, fair enough. Where is Morbidelli going? A bit like Bezecchi early on the race. Completely run off the circuit. Here we are down towards the seat of Pons corner. Looks for an outside move down Vinales, but you never win around the outside of that corner. It's just never, never on, even if you can carry the speed in. And out of this corner, though, we are just going to get past Fabio. Not Fabio, past Vinales. I don't know why I said Fabio. Down towards the Danny Petrosa corner again. Hit the brakes a bit earlier this time, so we don't go flying into the gravel. And this time, we've overtaken Vinales. Binder tries to force his way past Morbidelli, which is going to cost Morbidelli a bit of time. Can we try and follow Binder through? No, because Binder's not quite got the momentum that I need to do that. We'll get the switch back on Morbidelli. I mean, how can you even switch back to somebody like that? I mean, that's ridiculous. Morbidelli's gone massively wide as well. So there we go, the inside of Morbidelli. And hopefully we should be able to pass Binder, which would put us back up into the top five. So, once again, another comeback to the top five from right at the back. Can we try and get him? Yes, we can. Ride past him into... Oh, he just lent on me there through Alex Crivier. We should have him here into the next one through Ferrari. Yes, we have. Back up into the top five then. Next up then is Mark Marquez. Then it is the two factory Lenovo Ducatis. And then obviously a massive, massive distance in front. Probably a good six seconds there by the looks of it is Jorge Martin. He's obviously eight seconds ahead of us, but obviously those guys are probably about two seconds in front of me. There we are then on the back of Mark Marquez. We're going to be able to make a pass. No, we're not, actually. They're quite good in San Hel Nieto. I'll give them that. They are pretty good in there. Like, they carry a lot of corner speed on the entry. I've just seen that Banya has actually fought his way past Bastianini now, so it's definitely better for us. But I can see Bastianini right there, so hopefully we should be able to actually beat him in this one, and that obviously allows us to take the lead properly off the championship. But here we go, then, down towards the way Lorenzo corner. We're just going to ride past Marquez before we even get there. 
and cover him off on the entry to the corner by breaking nice and deep. He tries to go around the outside of someone that's gone in hot himself, so it's just not going to work. And there we are, up into fourth place, then Bastianini up next. Can we make a pass out towards turn one? Well, I'm going to go for it anyway, but it looks a bit... Oh, that was close, a bit of contact. I'll let him keep the position. So difficult to actually pull out of a move once you committed to it. I mean, it was a bit silly to commit, but again, I'm gaining so much on them that that's what it kind of invites. If I was running the same pace as them, I wouldn't obviously have tried that because there's no way I'd have pulled it down from that far back, but because they're so slow at the moment, I can try it. And here we go, into Cito Pons. I could try and hang it around the outside. I've not done it so far successfully this weekend. I think that's not going to change on this occasion. It is, in fact, going to change on this occasion. We've just gone around the outside of an airbash and through that. It's actually quite impressive, even with the AI riding in the manner that they are. So there we go, up onto the podium once again now then. Next up Spagnari, he goes pretty wide through the Danny Pedrosa, try and carry the speed, pick up the power. We're not going to attack him into turn 7, I'll try to line it up for a pass into turn 7, but not going to be able to do it. But maybe to turn 8, we've got on the power nice and early, but no, it's, it's a tricky one to pass into 8. It's got to be really, really forceful. We'll try and cut under him on the exit. Well, no, I had to back out of that one. <laughs> Again, really misjudging this, because they're not riding the same way they were in the sprint, so the, the place I was used to passing them, or... Like, the way I was overtaking them in that race. A much more fun race, I must say, because they actually were a bit of a challenge to fight my way past. So here we are then, down towards the final corner. So we go around the outside of him, deep on the brakes, into the last corner. We've gone probably a bit too deep. It might align back through. No, it, it just doesn't. They don't even try and get the cut back on you on this occasion. Right, so there we are then, up into P2. Not a very well-earned P2, I must admit, but there you go, I suppose, is, is the way it is. Because, I mean, that was a 37-2. But tell you what, we've got four laps. Let's just go ham. Can we catch Martini? Six seconds at the road. The pace they've been at's not been good. If we try and bang some low 36s in, we might have a shot at it. We'll see. Martin's pace has definitely been better than the rest of the AI still. I mean, he's this far in front, it kind of shows. Just on a 36-0, so quicker than what we did in the sprint. Pretty much what I did in qualifying there. That is pretty much my qualifying time. I think I did a 35-9 in qualifying. 3.2, coming towards the line. We're about half the gap, but I, I don't think it's actually quite going to be enough, but it'll be close. All right, there he is. We're in range now. One and a half seconds. So we're pretty much on target to about catch him, because that's about the amount of time we're taking out of him each lap, then up towards the line. It'll be another 36-0. Final lap of the race. Can we beat Jorge Martin here? My front tyre is crying enough. It's got absolutely nothing left, really, on the edge. Even though it's only about half worn, it feels like it's just gone completely. Right, here we are then. We're literally half a second behind Martin now. There's a chance we could beat him as we close up down towards the Daddy Pedrosa corner. We've gone pretty wide. So has Jorge. Has he got anything left for us? Is he going to defend with anything right at the end? There's a yellow flag, sector two. Not sure of that is. I mean, look at the gap to Banyar, by the way. We're eight seconds ahead of him. 21 seconds ahead of Ralph Fernandez. Morbidelli is the one that's gone down. So it's one product rider goes down. Is the other one about to lose the win. It could literally come down to the last corner here against Jorge Martin here for the Spanish Grand Prix. As we go through the stadium section, through Pelleki. We're all over the back of Jorge now towards the fast right handers. There's nothing you can do. You can't pass into these corners. So it is going to be a block pass into Lorenzo's corner, surely, against Martin here. So here we are on the power. Down towards the last corner. We are going to do it. Down towards the last corner. Martin hangs it around the outside. Is he able to keep it stick? No, he's going to the outside. He's almost lost the front. He's down. Martin's crashed at the last corner. Can you believe it? Up towards the line there. We're going to win here at the Spanish Grand Prix. Ah, oh, bless him. He actually retired. I was hoping he'd get back on. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous because there was no contact there. He just braked too late. He just braked too late, ran off the track and lost the front. Wow. Absolutely ridiculous. So that is certainly the last race I'm doing with the Adaptive AI. I said I was going to try something different and it worked really well in the sprint. But yeah, that's just not not a good race. Not a fair race, is it? I mean, look at that. 22 seconds ahead of Raul Fernandez there. I had to pass him on a lap about like lap three. Something like that. I've put that much time into him. I've actually got the fastest laps. That says enough. The simulated times couldn't even take it off me. I'm about two seconds clear of everybody. I actually want to go see what Martin's fastest lap was. 37.7. So yeah, he was probably significantly quicker than the rest of the AI. Actually, no, he was about on part with the other Ducatis. So yeah, and Marquez actually got the fastest lap, but that was probably the simulations. So Martin's was legit because obviously he couldn't. But honestly, I feel so bad for him because he'd had such a good weekend. Pole by that margin. Dominated the sprint race. 
dominated the main race, but just because the AI decided to ride so slowly, it's, it is a bit of a joke. It is a bit of a joke, I'm not going to lie. So, yeah, we've won that one, but that is definitely going to be the last one that we're going to do with the adaptive AI. So, as for the Riders' Championship then, well, I mean, it's it's a, an interesting affair if you look at that. We're now nine points clear of Anea Bastianini. So, fortunately, if we do change the AI at this point of the season and they are more competitive and this doesn't happen again, the Championship isn't ruined because we're still in a good fight here with Bastianini. So, there, there is that. But Martins are 63 points behind, Marquez 65 points back, Bagnaia 67, Aleix also 67, 69 for Vinales, 78 for Acosta. I mean, everybody's miles behind. So the only people that are anywhere, anywhere near each other are myself and Bastianini. Everybody else just keeps crashing. I mean, Martin was finally building a bit, bit of form there. It would have been a good 20 points there. It would have definitely been a lot closer. As for the team's championship then, the Lenovo do continue to lead because... Well, Rafa Fernandez is just letting the team down, unfortunately, for us at Trackhouse. We're 25 points back off of Ducati Lenovo. Aprilia, the factory Aprilia team, sat in third place. Grassini now move up to fourth, ahead of Pramac in fifth, after both of them retired from the main race. As for the Constructors' Championship then, Ducati continue to lead now. Only three points ahead of ourselves, Aprilia in second place. 76 points then back to KTM in third. 107 to Yamaha and 119 to Honda. You can see, of course, their gas gas now moved down to last place, but of course, they are bugged. I may have a look, see if I can remove them off this screen so that it's not uh, not confusing or anything like that, because, of course, uh, I've, I've modded, modded the game now so that the gas gas guys are actually on the KTMs as, as they are in real life. But there you go, then. An interesting Spanish Grand Prix, but unfortunately, again, just the adaptive AI just proving to not really work correctly. So, yeah, I I'm gonna gonna change it from the next episode. We are gonna go to the slider AI, as I'm gonna call it. We're actually set the difficulty. It's a shame because the system actually is quite good. In fact, that it adapts to your to your pace. It would be good if it just set, told you the difficulty, and then you could do that. May maybe we'll have to figure out if there's a way to calculate it based off that. But not a lot else to say. So we'll head back to the career hub, see what we've got on the social media feeds, and then we'll end off the episode. So looking at the reward take, see it's been pretty good for us. We've obviously achieved our turning point, Captain's Armband. We're now the team leader and we've got some extra development because of that. We're now a top rider as well. So we're literally only one rank now from champion already. Look at all of the points we get. I mean, you get so much reputation just finishing in the top 15. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's almost impossible to not finish in the top 15. I'm pretty sure there's only two people outside the top 15 in that race because of how many people crashed. So I need to pick two people that actually achieve 44,000 reputation points which is which is ridiculous but of course with us beating that turning point we're actually going to get a new one so let's see what that's going to be actually no we haven't we haven't got a new turning point that's strange okay that has got to be the first i've ever seen that last year every single time you beat a turning point you always got another one straight away so it's probably because i think we now have a test coming up so yeah we'll have to see but we have got two messages then on the social media feeds so let's have a little look at that one i'm surprised to not see anything for digi antonio because We've had contact with him. He's gone down. We've been given a long lap. So the game's clearly seen it as my fault. And then he's not moaned about it on the social media, which is a strange thing to say. But Aleish then, a great victory for Biker. I'll have to try and see what went wrong with the team so we can recover already at Le Mans. Yeah, of course, we are really outperforming the factory guys at the moment. So let's see what we can say to him then. It's been a really good weekend. Rounded off in the best possible way. We'll continue to work with the team to get ready for the next race. So we'll select that one. And then Vinales. I have to say, the continuing growth of Aprilia is down to Biker. It's no accident that they were made team leader. Congratulations. So again, we'll be very nice to Vinales. Thank you very much. I hope I'll be able to return your trust in me with even better results. So... Yes, of course, we are now the team leader of the team at Trackhouse, but of course, it's been pretty clear since the first test, let's be honest, that we were obviously better than Raul, at least his AI in this game. But that pretty much does bring this episode to a close. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that one. I do apologize about what happened with the AI in that one. Like I said, I'm definitely turning off adaptive AI. I wanted to give it one more try this weekend, see if we could sort of get it to work how I wanted it to. And it actually did work in the sprint. I actually felt like that was quite good. Again, I, I kind of agree with what you guys are saying. Maybe I shouldn't be at the front on this bike particularly. I mean, I know what I said was obviously that the, this bike is an Aprilia as far as the game is concerned. So, I mean, I know it's an Aprilia, but it's it's basically an Aprilia is an Aprilia according to the game pretty much. So it's going to be a good bike. But if you actually look at the bike development page, yeah, we are at the bottom. I mean, we're not far off. You can see the top of Ducati. There's not much in it. But even still, on technically the worst bike, we certainly shouldn't be winning races this regularly. So I will obviously for the next episode change it up a little bit and give it a try with maybe trying to find the, the right AI difficulty for myself, which is a shame because I kind of liked the fact that the adaptive AI was doing it for me, but 
if that's what we've got to do to have a good episode, that's what we've got to do. So I'm happy to go ahead and do that one. But like I said, hope you did enjoy that one. If you are new to the channel, please do like the video and subscribe because it really helps me out. And of course, it is a win-win for both of us as you get some more MotoGP24 game content in your subscription feed. But I hope you do enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.